My husband knocked up our girlfriend without my permission. I'm 30 and have a strict contract with my 38-year-old husband and our 26-year-old girlfriend that she is not to get pregnant by him under any circumstances. But the two of them violated that contract behind my back. Now our girlfriend is expecting his baby. Meanwhile, I'm already over seven months pregnant. In the event that our side piece were to become pregnant with my husband's child, the contract said that she would terminate the pregnancy. But now that she's refusing, I'm rethinking whether I want to stay married. My husband and I are in an open marriage. We've been married for five years and open for the past two years. Currently, we have a long-term girlfriend that we both have been with for just over a year. I'm also 30 weeks pregnant, and we're all so excited to welcome our daughter into the world soon. Our relationship and time in the bedroom has never been better, until the other day when our girlfriend announced her pregnancy to us. I was so surprised. I didn't know she had been seeing anyone else. After I congratulated her, I asked who the father was, and she said that it was my husband. This was something that we never talked about at all, so I politely asked her to leave while I discussed this with my husband. Apparently, her seeing me pregnant and so excited convinced her that she was ready for motherhood herself, and she told my husband that she would be stopping her birth control. My husband never told me about this, and neither did our girlfriend. So the entire time we've been together for the past few months, they were having completely unprotected relations without my knowledge, which was not part of our agreement. I'm still his wife, and she's just our girlfriend. I feel so betrayed by my husband that he would go behind my back like that. They don't understand why I'm mad. They think that I should be happy. I was aware that my husband has a breeding fetish. So do I, but this is much, much different than just role-playing situations, and they don't seem to understand that. I don't know how else to express to them how disrespectful that was to me. We had a written agreement that birth control is to be used with our partners. We even discussed in that same written agreement that any pregnancies would not continue if our birth control were to fail. But this pregnancy was intentional and non-consensual. Good golly, there's a lot to unpack here. First, while I'll admit I'm not completely sure, I really don't think you can contractually obligate someone to abort any hypothetical buns that might pop up in the oven while they're banging your spouse. Second, it seems odd to call this pregnancy both intentional and non-consensual. You actually don't have to consent to a pregnancy between two other people. It's not like you can say he cheated on you, he just took your shared bicycle out for a spin without wearing a helmet. This OP is really sticking to her guns about this contract, though. Commenters have tried to call her out on pressuring another woman to terminate a pregnancy, but OP assures them the contract is notarized and has been reviewed by their lawyer. The OP is now considering a divorce and assures the commenters that this document will entitle her to marital assets she wouldn't have won from a normal divorce proceeding. So at least she recognizes that none of this is normal. I've never felt less qualified to comment on a situation, so I'm turning this over to you. Is OP right to want a divorce? Does she deserve additional assets? Will a court of law even take this contract seriously? Leave us a comment letting us know how you usually handle things when your spouse knocks up your side piece. Also, should the husband's betrayal affect the custody battle for the child they have on the way? Why or why not? My daughter uses CPS as a weapon, and it's completely broken me. I met Lila's father, Mac Daddy, when I was 20, and he was 19. I won't get into detail, but it was an insanely toxic relationship. I know now he's a diagnosed narcissist. When we split, there was no contact, no child support, and no family. So I struggled to raise my daughter by myself. When she was seven, I met my current husband, Alvin. All aspects of our little family were great. Lila loved Alvin. They did everything together. He treated her like his own. He was the dad she always wanted. We had two kids a few years later, Wombat and Zendaya and Lila was excited to have siblings. Things were great, until Lila's 12th birthday, when she told me the only thing she wanted for her birthday was to meet Mac Daddy. I reached out to him, assuming that I'd never hear back, but to my surprise, his girlfriend responded and said they'd love to get to know Lila. That in itself should have been a red flag, and I should have just told her that I couldn't get in contact. But I felt like she deserved to meet him and form her own opinion. We met at a park a week later. Mac Daddy told her he hated kids and never wanted any, and that she was a huge mistake. I wanted to completely cut him off at that point, but Lila wanted to keep seeing him. So we set up a bi-weekly day where Mac Daddy and his girlfriend would come to our house and spend time with Lila. However, two months in, Lila decided that she wanted Mac Daddy around more, 
but that Alvin needed to go so that Mac Daddy, Lila, and myself could be a family. Lila's solution was to tell the school that Alvin diddled her. Of course, Child Protective Services shows up, and Alvin was arrested. And because I defended my husband, CPS took my children from me and placed them in foster care. I went broke, fighting with everything I had to prove I was a fit parent. And nine months in, when Lila realized that Mac Daddy was not going to save her from foster care, she decided to tell CPS she was lying. And my kids all came home to me. It was almost another year before Alvin was allowed to come back to the house, as we had to do intensive family therapy. During all that, we had lost our house and ended up in a two-bedroom trailer. With five people, it's not ideal, but we made do. After everything, Mac Daddy kept his distance, but was still texting Lila regularly. Mac Daddy would only see Lila maybe once every three to four months or so. For the next couple of years, everything was fine. Except CPS would randomly show up, usually when Lila wasn't getting her way. But they would leave when they saw nothing was actually wrong. Until recently. Lila is struggling in school and told me in April that she wanted to drop out. I told her there was no way I was going to allow that. She doesn't bring it up again, so I thought we were good. But towards the end of school, around the end of June, Lila tells me she wants to spend the summer with Mac Daddy. I was hesitant. But the last Friday of school, here comes CPS. They need to talk to me about Lila's mistreatment and Alvin's diddling. I was in shock. So I agreed to let Lila spend the summer with Mac Daddy, and CPS magically disappears from my life. Lila was insistent that she didn't call them. Lila proceeds to not only ignore me all summer, but turn my sister, the only family I have, against me. She's been telling everyone about how horrible I and Alvin are, and she's so glad to be free now. I found out via Lila's best friend that apparently Mac Daddy told Lila that if she lived with him full time, she could drop out of school and start her actual life. So about two weeks ago, I got a call from the school that seemed out of the blue, saying that I needed to sign off on my child being unenrolled. I called Mac Daddy and Lila to figure out what was going on, and was basically met with the choice that I either do this or CPS will be back to my house. Honestly, every time they show up, I have a panic attack. It's a trauma response at this point. Lila has now told me she has no interest in ever coming back home but that she still expects me to buy her a car for her 17th birthday and pick her up every week so that she can see her siblings, since Mac Daddy lives over an hour away. Alvin says I need to just let her go. He loves her, but it's not worth the constant battle and trauma they're causing me. And of course, he's concerned about the repercussions of me fighting it. I don't want this affecting my younger two children. Thankfully, they were too young to remember the first time. Today, Mac Daddy called me to ask how I was, which I know is a load of turds. He seems all too happy, almost 17 years later, continuing to mistreat me. He knows my kids are my everything, and he's turned my daughter against me, and both of them use CPS as a weapon. Lila also FaceTimed Wombat and Zendaya and told them I kicked her out because I don't love her anymore. I don't want to just let my daughter go, but at the same time, I can't keep enduring this emotional trauma. I truly believe Lila has borderline personality disorder, but because of her age, they won't diagnose her. But she has all the signs of it, and there's family history. I also haven't even begun to explain all of it. There's just too many things. But the things she has done to my family have completely broken me. Sad and depressed don't even begin to explain the emotions I feel. It's not good. I love her and want to help her. I've been having panic attacks and crying for days, and I just really needed to vent. I don't feel like I can talk to anyone about this. My favorite part of this story is how CPS throws a man in jail and the kids in foster care with no investigation whatsoever, but then later disappears altogether after accusing Alvin of continuing to touch his stepdaughter. And you'd think they would be even more likely to investigate once the daughter gets pulled out of school. I've known some people who had issues with CPS. They really do take some pretty awful things on faith sometimes, but I'm not sure it actually goes to this extreme. And speaking of extreme, I'm really unclear on why the dad and his girlfriend were so excited to meet this girl if the endgame was just to tell her that she was a mistake. And then that makes her want to spend more time around these people? Maybe OP is right about there being some sort of mental illness at play here, because this truly is not normal behavior. The comments feel like OP should cut all contact with the daughter, and an update says she intends to do just that. But it really bothers me how thoroughly this girl is ruining her life, if this story is even a little bit true. How would you handle this girl? Would you cut contact, or is there another solution here? Let us know down below.
If you made it this far in the video, consider liking and subscribing for more videos coming. I wouldn't let my niece have cake, so she stole my car. I live on a farm with my husband and two kids. My brother Dwayne has a 15-year-old daughter. We'll call her Emma. My brother and his wife have always been very quick to compliment me on the behavior of my children. Angela, my sister-in-law, confides in me about Emma's troubles. Emma is very reckless, shoplifts, drinks, has an older boyfriend, and gets into fights at school. She's also constantly suspended in and out of school. Over the summer, Emma had a run-in with the law, and they were told that if she didn't straighten up her act, that she would end up in prison. They were suggested to try therapy, but Emma would never participate. Dwayne asked me if I would take Emma and teach her some responsibility. The arrangement was that I would take Emma for the final month of summer, enroll her in school here, and keep her for the first semester. If all went well, Emma was welcome to stay with us. Otherwise, other options would be explored. Emma did not do well all through July. Her boyfriend drove over to visit her, to my dismay. I tried to make him leave, but it caused him backlash. So I figured I would set visitation, then wean her time from him more and more. Then I caught her smoking one of those electronic cigarettes twice. She would never do any of the work asked, would talk back, steal food, break things, and would be rude to my children. All of that could be dealt with. I knew that once school came around, she needed to be more disciplined. So one morning, we got into an argument because I told her I was chaining up the fridge and that she better act right or else she'll be forced to scavenge for her food around the farm and cook it herself. If she doesn't want to contribute, she gets nothing the household has worked for. She was livid, throwing stuff, stomping her feet, making rude gestures. My son and I left to go tend to the animal's morning duties and told her that she better catch up to get some chicken tonight or start preparing to pick some vegetables for herself. After an hour of work, I sent my son back home to get me a change of pants due to a fall. He came back asking me if his dad had taken my car. We quickly realized Emma had stolen it. Not only that, but she did not have a license, only a permit. I did what any reasonable person would do in this situation and called the police. They found her two hours later and arrested her, saying she was to be charged with a misdemeanor for driving without a license, and I believe joyriding. My brother and his wife are furious with me. They told me she steals our cars all the time and always brings them back, which that would have been good information for me to know beforehand. My family is siding with them that calling the police when knowing she would be arrested was a jerk move. Just to tack this on so I don't have to reiterate it to everyone who comments about the fridge bit, that was more or less an empty threat. If it came to it though, I can't say I would have totally ruled that out as crossing the line. Also about stealing food, Part of what I do is bake and sell what I make at a farmer's market nearby. She would take cakes, pies, and other pastries I would make and eat them herself. I would make some little versions for the kids, but she would take the whole portion meant for sale and eat it herself, and throw out the extra. She would throw away three-fourths of a cake. Please note, we live on a vegetable farm. She has access to vegetables and fruits. When I say scavenge, I mean go outside and pick something to eat and cook. I'm not denying her food. Let's rewind a minute. Emma stomps her feet when she argues. Is she 15 or 5? Also, did you catch the detail about Emma continuing to live with OP if everything went well? In other words, Emma's parents didn't know what to do with her, so they literally just gave her away. That takes guts. Most parents would worry about being shamed if they just gave up on their kids like that. Not Dwayne and Angela. They've got a life to live, and they don't need some pouty brat holding them back. Anyway, this OP definitely isn't the jerk for calling the cops. For a child like that, consequences are actually the best gift you can give them. Even if they do usually bring their stolen cars back, they still need to know that the world won't sit back and tolerate this kind of behavior. Some parents think they're doing what's best for their child by neglecting to offer consequences, but they're not. And it's dumb for Emma's parents to argue in this case, since they asked for OP's help. This is what that help looks like, so they have no right to complain. I refuse to give up my bed for a sick child. My boyfriend has three kids. A wildfire broke out by their house and the neighborhood had to evacuate, so I told my boyfriend to bring his kids to my apartment. I've known his kids for months, and they're all great kids, but they're a bit spoiled. My boyfriend's oldest daughter, 12 years old, has health issues, and they were at the hospital getting her treatments when the fire broke out. The younger two, five and seven, were at home with their nanny when the fire broke out, so the nanny took the kids straight to my place and my boyfriend joined us an hour or so later. My boyfriend came in carrying his oldest because she was asleep and he didn't want to wake her up. 
He asked where he could put her down, so I showed him to the room that I had planned on all of the kids and the nanny sharing. The nanny is a live-in nanny, and I guess she didn't have anywhere else to go. The room has two bunk beds, so everyone has their own bed. He said he didn't want her to be in the same room as her siblings because she was going to need a lot of rest, and he doesn't want them to bother her. I asked where I was supposed to put her, and he suggested my room. I asked if he meant only for a few hours, and he said no, the whole night. I asked where we were supposed to sleep, and he said we can sleep on the pull-out couch. I said I wasn't giving up my room so his 12-year-old can have her own room, and he left with the kids and nanny. Now he's saying he needs to rethink this relationship because I wouldn't sleep on my couch for one night to let his daughter rest without her siblings waking her up and bothering her. Edit. To everyone asking why I have bunk beds in my guest room, my brother and sister-in-law have four kids, and I babysit one or two weekends a month. Edit 2. He broke up with me last night because I made it clear that I don't like or respect the kids, and it's not fair to them for him to stay in a relationship with me. Reddit won't be happy until all children are wiped from the face of the earth, so naturally OP was largely voted not to be the jerk here. A few more reasonable people said there was no jerk at all. If she doesn't want to give up her bed, that's fine. Just like it's fine for her boyfriend to dump her and look for someone who understands children and cares about letting a girl rest when she comes home from the hospital. Sometimes it's really not about who's the jerk and who's not. This OP was willing to share her space, but there were limits on it. Those limits didn't really make sense for her boyfriend's situation. Some people called him and his children choosy beggars, but that's really not the case. Worrying that a sick child might be woken up by a five-year-old is pretty reasonable for a parent. At the end of the day, this couple just wasn't a good match. He needs someone who understands and maybe likes children a little more. And I'm guessing OP needs someone with no children at all. But what do you think? Was asking OP to give up her bed for one night reasonable or too tall in order? Is one of them the jerk or were they just a bad match? Let us know your read on the situation in the comments below. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.